Good evening, I'm Shogun Mohammed and this is the 7 o'clock news. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, was at the forefront of those who bid farewell to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Jordan, Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II today, following a visit to the kingdom during which he met with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Also present at Sghir Air Base were His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa along with other senior officials. As part of his official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan yesterday visited the Royal Guards headquarters. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Jordan and His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa were received by His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Lieutenant Colonel Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Commander of the Royal Guard Special Force, and a number of senior officers. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Jordan was briefed on the Royal Guard's strategies and tactical operations in addition to the various programs introduced to advance its combat readiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Jordan then toured the Royal Guard Special Force Museum and participated in a counter-terrorism military exercise during which he praised the Royal Guard's advanced operational readiness. His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted the long-standing ties between the two nations underpinned by His Majesty King Hamad's support to advance cooperation at all levels. أخي العزيز صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير الحسين بن عبد الله الثاني ولي عهد المملكة الأردنية الهاشمية الشقيقة وأخواني منتسبي قوات الدفاع السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يشرفنا في هذا اليوم المبارك سيدي 
احتفالا بالذكرى ال 51 من تاسيس قوه الدفاع البحرين ان نرحب بكم اجمل ترحيب في وحدتكم وفي بلدكم الثاني مملكه البحرين ووحده الحرس الملكي بالاخص. وعلما سيدي تاسيس هذه القوه التي قامت ولا زالت ان تقوم بالدفاع عن الدين والحق ومكافحه الارهاب الدولي متاسسه مع نخبه من رجال الجيش العربي الجيش الاردني جلاله الملك ولا يسعنا بالذكر ابلغكم شخصيا ان قامت قوه الدفاع بنخبه من رجال الاردن ونفتخر ونعتز بهذه البدايه واليوم اريدك تشوف التقدم هذا والحصاد وثمره الزرع اللي انتم زرعتوه في مملكه البحرين ولله الحمد
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, deputized this morning the Chairman of the Bahrain Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to inaugurate His Royal Highness's Center for Medical Training and Research, marking the 51st anniversary of the establishment of the Bahrain Defense Force. Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Idiab bin Sagar Al Naimi was also present. The ceremony began with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Then the commander of the Royal Medical Services, Major General Professor Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he lauded the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the diligent follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in addition to the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. The record is very clear, and the power of the research and training and ultimately transformative impact of progress in the human health. But we must also not forget that all of the creativity of all that uh, and comprehension will not mean what it can be uh, done if we are not assuring that thought move from bench to the bedside. We have an obligation to be prudent and efficient in our use of resources to get a maximum positive outcome. We cannot achieve every goal or target that appear to be desirable. But at the same time, we must not miss tremendous opportunity that is inherent in this moment. After that, Professor Carl Miller addressed the audience marking the occasion. A film was displayed on the different departments and medical services provided by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Center for Medical Training and Research, which is the first medical education hub in Bahrain. The center presents promising training and research opportunities for Bahraini Qadris and to all who work in the medical field in general. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah then honored the sponsors and the center's affiliates. The Royal Medical Services Commander presented a commemorative gift and the annual reports on Royal Medical Services to Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah. Then Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah toured the center and was briefed on its departments and the simulation rooms that include the latest advanced medical equipments according to the latest educational specifications. He also inspected the electronic library and a number of training sections of injuries in addition to labs, experimental operation rooms and various advanced treatment units. The chairman of the Real Estate Regulatory Authority and president of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, opened the Bahrain Real Estate Investment Expo 2019 along with representatives of major real estate development companies. Sheikh Salman said that hosting different events for real estate represents the aspirations for the sector given the strategic role it plays in the Bahraini economy. He affirmed that the policies of the government are based on supporting the private sector and encouraging it to play a greater role in the economy as per the economic vision of 2030. Sheikh Salman said the expo represents a call for local and international investors to invest in the economy given that the country has a suitable infrastructure and an advanced set of laws and regulations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in the ministerial meeting of the Global Coalition Against ISIS held in Washington in the presence of U.S. President Donald J. Trump. The minister expressed his thanks and appreciation to President Donald Trump and to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for hosting the meeting, which reflects the great strategic role of the United States in leading the global alliance against ISIS and for the relentless efforts to strengthen international cooperation. The Global Alliance against Daesh has attained significant successes and made substantial progress in its war on terror across the world in recent years. 
The minister affirmed that Bahrain is keen on playing its full role as a founding member of the alliance towards categorical elimination of terrorist organizations. He pointed out that the next stage requires efforts and intensified work to uproot ISIS existence in Iraq and Syria in order to reinstate stability, security and development in the liberated areas. Sheikh Khalid stressed the necessity of eliminating the emergence of all forms of terrorism in the region by countering the Iranian interference in the internal affairs of the countries of the region and ending its support for terrorism, extremism and sectarianism, emphasizing the need for reaching a just and comprehensive solution to the Palestinian crisis. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the Hungarian Foreign Affairs and Trade Minister on the sidelines of the ministerial meeting of the Global Alliance against Daesh in Washington, D.C. Developments in the region and a number of regional and international issues were among the exchanged views at the meeting. Sheikh Khalid expressed Bahrain's keen desire to develop its relations with Hungary at various levels towards wider horizons for the benefit of the two countries' peoples. The Hungarian minister stressed his country's interest in further promoting its bilateral ties of cooperation and friendship with the kingdom in all fields, hailing the kingdom's open policy and cooperation with the world countries. The Ministry of Education organized a meeting that included principals of government schools and a number of specialists at the ministry following the enactment of the law that set aside class periods for daily reading. This comes in the context of the ministry's efforts to cancel homework and replace them with school activities, as well as its reorganization of the school day and the modernization of the curriculum. The Ministry of Education, Majid al Aimi, attended the meeting, where it affirmed that encouraging students to read every day is a part of the required skills in the 21st century, as well as the labor market. The minister also discussed the efforts of the ministry to make use of information technology in the teaching process, among which is the Digital Library Initiative, which has won awards for making education more accessible. The director of the Adams Islamic Center and the head of the World Religions Dialogue Foundation in Washington, Imam Mohammed Majid, expressed happiness in the values of peace mentioned in Bahrain's declaration, which should be shared with all religious leaders. He added that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's international document exceeded the boundaries of tolerance and acceptance to reach an integrated approach of human coexistence derived from the reality the kingdom is living. The members of the International Dialogue of Religions Associations noted that the coexistence values that His Majesty the King is promoting reflects the essence of the Abrahamic religions, which promotes peace, equality, and rejection of hatred and discrimination. The importance of the Kingdom's declaration is growing because it acts as an invitation for peace from an Arab Muslim leader at a time where differences are used as fuel for conflict. The delegation met with the board members of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence as part of their diverse program and visits in Washington, D.C. It was a wonderful meeting uh, different representatives from various communities in Bahrain and it is really uh, shows the, the beauty of the coexistence in Bahrain. Uh, when I read the declaration, uh, the Bahrain declaration, uh, in the issue of coexistence, I really was fascinated by having a Muslim country really present this gift to all of us in America uh, from the various communities. Uh, we, we Here in America, we work with the, our brothers and sisters from the Jewish community and the Christian community and other communities. But today, meeting the delegation representing the Hindu community and the Baha'i community and the Christian community and the Jewish community, it just brought joy to my heart that uh, all of them spoke about Bahrain in the most beautiful way, a very exciting way, and you can see the love of their country in their, in their eyes as they speak about the, the beauty of the diversity of Bahrain and, and the coexistence in the social fabric in Bahrain, which is something that really we appreciate here in America. My thoughts is summarized in what is contained in the declaration because um, to really uh, provide a solution to a situation that uh, really is plaguing the world today, which is uh, uh, a new identity, identifying people and uh, classifying them based on their religion. It has become a challenge to coexistence. Uh, but then the, uh, the declaration has really provided a basis because to solve a problem you need three things. One is the conceptual framework. And that is what the declaration is all about. But then you need some few things to add to that. The second thing that you need is to have tools. Those tools help you now to uh, really work with the concept. 
and then now out of the tools you develop process. So I think that uh, with the center, the center has put together a foundation by which you can now bring coexistence. And how do you do that? You do that by finding a way of changing the way people think about each other, exposing themselves to each other. And when you do that through the concept, which is the, um, the uh, declaration, now what the center is working with us, to, based on the, today's meeting, is that we will work together with the center to develop tools and then processes for working with uh, religious leaders, women organizations, young people, so that they have an understanding of what Bahrain is trying to teach the rest of the world. Because we can see that when it comes to uh, religious freedom, when it comes to coexistence, they have already put together a foundation. And the document really captures that. And so our, after today's meeting, our, my opinion is that working together will be able to come up with a complete framework that is based on the concept, which is the declaration, new tools that will help with teaching and a process by which we can engage the entire world in the working for uh, the betterment of the world and coexistence. I found um, the Kingdom of Bahrain and the declaration that His Majesty put together has was, was been very impressive. And I say this as someone who comes from the Catholic community, and um, those kind of things help us learn. But to see it also becoming today, what I learned was it became concrete. There's a, there's a center that is helping promote it and to live it out around the world, not just in Bahrain, but also here in the United States and around the world. That's very, very impressive, I find. We need more both thought leadership and the actual convening of people. You bring those two things together, it's a very powerful tool for understanding, for peace, for tackling the problems of the world, like the social development goals and things like that. The National Bureau of Revenue has held today a workshop for stakeholders from the IT sector to order and introduce all the mechanisms, technical and organizational aspects of the value-added tax in order for its proper application. The workshop comes within the framework of the NBR's keenness to achieve the highest level of transparency in all aspects related to the application of VAT and in further enhancing the awareness of all concerned parties. During the workshop, the NBR team briefed the representatives of a number of IT companies on all aspects related to VAT, especially in the IT sector, such as the VAT model, the method of accurate data recording, and the components of the VAT invoices, in addition to answering questions and inquiries related to the VAT application. NBR also provided all the necessary information that contributes to the maximum efficiency and effectiveness during the experimental phase of VAT application. The NBR asserted the continuity of the intensive program of value-added taxes, workshops and events, which began in December of last year ahead of its implementation January 1st. NBR pointed out that the program will also expand to include most of the vital sectors in the Kingdom to answer all questions and inquiries related to VAT, to ensure its implementation during the initial stage of its launching. The NBR stressed the importance of concerted efforts of all concerned parties to ensure the success of the experimental phase of VAT launch and increase the awareness and knowledge of companies registered for VAT purposes on the technical and procedural aspects of this tax. The NBR has renewed its call on consumers and businesses to communicate and ask questions about VAT or to report any violation of the proper value-added application by calling 8000-8001 or email vat at mofne.gov.bh or go to NBR website www.nbr.gov.bh.